Hey everyone, it's me Nicole and I'm here. I'm going to do a quick update. I'm waiting for an appointment so I thought I would go ahead and talk to you guys. I'm really, really, it's really, really hot so I'm sweaty and I've got redness going on all over the place and look at this scratch. My cat attacked me the other night. It was awesome. So yeah, but I have three appointments that I believe that I have not updated you guys on and so I thought I would go ahead and update you guys on the past three weeks. So 37, 38, and 39. So 37 week, my 37 week appointment, I had my first cervical check. Um, I had it with the midwife actually at the practice, which was really cool. I wasn't, I didn't know if I was going to be seeing the midwife at all. Um, but she came in and she said, you know, I, I'm not going to be able to deliver you, but I will be here for you throughout your, you know, pregnancy. And, you know, if you have any questions or if there's anything I can help you with, I'll be here. So I thought that was really cool. And so she went ahead and checked me and it hurt really, really bad. But I was a face about 50%, which I was really excited about, and that I was dilated about a fingertip. But the head was in a really good position. So, or not, not even a fingertip, a dimple. And so I was like, all right, you know, it's, it's a starting point. And so her recommendation at that appointment was that I go home and have a lot of sex with my husband, um, which is easier said than done with my big old belly nowadays. But um, the prostaglandins in their um, sperm, <laughs> they help to soften your cervix and get you ready for um, get you ready for labor. So that was her recommendation. And so she sent me home, sent me on my way. And then that week I had tons and tons of what I thought were contractions. Um, they may have been Braxton Hicks contractions, but they were a lot more frequent and a lot more more intense, but they weren't like painful or, or anything like that. And so nothing regular or anything like that, nothing that I was concerned about. So then at 38 weeks, I went in and I had gained, I think it said that I gained, had gained six pounds or something at that point, which was nuts. I'm like, there's no way that I gained six pounds in a week, but whatever. So I went in for that appointment and it was the midwife again that checked me. But she she did a membrane sweep and so her whenever her hand came out it was pretty gross um but yeah it was still really really painful my cervix was still really really far back um but she said that she was able to um, get one fingertip and so it was probably right around one centimeter and again still uh, about 50 percent effaced but the baby's head was in a really good position so i thought that was really good that was good news she recommended at that appointment that I make sure that I'm sitting forward on chairs instead of lounging back or reclining. Um, she said that leaning forward helps the baby's head move into the correct position and reclining kind of allows them to float more. So that was something that I was really, really um, conscious of and she said that you know the pressure of the baby's head being in the right position would help to dilate me so that was something that I was really really conscious of the whole week and I actually it was a week and a half because um, I w had been going for my appointments on Mondays and Monday was Memorial Day so I ended up going on Wednesday so for that whole week and a half I made sure that I was sitting up straight or sitting forward I went out and got actually my brother works at Walmart so he picked me up a uh, uh, exercise ball so I could sit on that and um, get myself in a really good position and so I was really sure that that combined with all of the Braxton Hicks contractions that I'd been having and all the pressure that I'd been feeling really thought that I was going to be more dilated but I went back for my 39 week appointment which was on Wednesday this past Wednesday the Wednesday after Memorial Day and I went in and, and the midwife was not there that day it was the doctor and he went to check me and he said that my cervix was actually really far back but also to the left and that weirded me out because I first of all the mid, the midwife had never said anything about it second of all I've never heard that before I've heard of having I've heard of people having you know a posterior um, cervix and it's really far back there you know people that have have tipped uteruses or something like that and I've heard you know that it's supposed to swing down and you know go straight down and um, you know, it's supposed to get shorter and softer and all this and I knew all that but I had never heard of a 
cervix that was off to the side. So that was really weird. He said that it probably had something to do with the C-section that, you know, when they went and put my uterus back inside of my body after they were done delivering the baby, you know, things just kind of settled weird. But I just, I just thought that that was weird that nobody had ever, you know, I hadn't had any other mention of it the whole time I've been pregnant, not in an ultrasound, not in any of the other cervical checks or anything. And so I didn't know if it had happened just in the past week since I had seen the midwife or, you know, if it's something that had happened a long time ago. So I was kind of, on the one hand, you know, I asked him, I said, is there anything that I can do? Is there a certain way that I should be sitting? Should, am I sleeping the wrong way? Like, what should I do? And he said, there's nothing that I can do to really reposition the baby. Um, but just, you know, try to hope that your body works itself out. So... On the one hand, I was like, okay, well, maybe I should just, you know, hope that my body does what it's supposed to do and, you know, all that. But I was worried because this whole time I've really just been concerned about making sure that I set myself up for the best possible chance to have a VBAC. And if my cervix is not going to dilate and I don't go into labor, that's going to stand a little bit in the way. And my doctor um, will consider inducing me. However, um, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know how I feel about Pitocin. I really just wanted everything to kind of start naturally. I trusted my body and I really just thought that it would happen when it would happen and I wasn't going to push it. And I really kind of wasn't on the Pitocin train. But now I'm thinking if my, if my cervix off to this, if my cervix is off to the side and the baby's head is not putting pressure on it to dilate, am I going to need drugs in order to you know, dilate because it's not like my body's in its natural state, you know, it, it's been opened up, it's been rearranged in there and things like that. So, you know, am I going to need a medication? And then for that, you know, that starts off with the intervention. So then it's Pitocin and possibly an epidural. And then, you know, is my baby going to go into, I'm just like, I just had all these worries. And so, um, I put a shout out, shout out to the girls on the ICANN, um, Facebook and, then I had a thought pop into my head that maybe if I went to see a chiropractor, you know, maybe they could kind of work with my muscles and help things kind of settle in the right way. And so I started calling chiropractors and trying to find out information about that. And then I went back to my computer and checked my Facebook. And sure enough, there was like five ladies who all suggested a chiropractor and to, to see, to find one that knew the Webster technique. So that's actually where I'm at today. I am at a chiropractor, um, a chiropractor's office to see if, um, I guess this is going to be a consultation and then I have to go for an exam and then they would start doing the adjustments. So I'm 39 weeks and four days now. So I don't know how many adjustments I could possibly get before the baby would be born. But, um, you know, I've heard so many people give me the suggestion of seeing a chiropractor and they say, even if your cervix is perfect, that you should see a chiropractor in your last trimester just because it is so good for you and it's so good for your labor and delivery in general and so it wouldn't hurt anything to, to come see the chiropractor so I'm gonna give it a shot um, and actually I was kind of worried about my finances because I'm getting my placenta encapsulated and that's you know just something that even though we're a little rough on cash right now that was something that I really really felt was very important for me to, to have and um, I was kind of scared that I was going to have to give that up in order to come see the chiropractor. But right after I had like called the chiropractor, set up the appointment, been talking to people on Facebook and things like that, my neighbor came over and asked if I could babysit for her and um, for the next couple days. And even though I was kind of scared to commit to her because I'm like, well, I could go into labor at any point. At the same time, I'm like, well, that's an opportunity to, you know, to put a little bit of money towards the chiropractor. So I kind of thought that was like, you know, really awesome that, that that opportunity came literally knocking at my door um, right as I was wondering how I was gonna pay for this. So we're gonna see if it works. I, you know, I would hate to spend my resources if it turns out to be, you know, just really not beneficial. But from what I've heard from pretty much every person is that it is so worth it. So 
We'll see. I got here early, I guess. I thought my appointment was at 2, but I think it's actually at 3. So I'm just sitting in my car, like, pouring sweat. I'm going to need to take a drink of water. Um, but, yeah, so I will let you guys know if anything changes. Oh, and I guess I should mention that last week, so mm, let's see. It was the Tuesday before Memorial Day. So my appointment was the Wednesday after Memorial Day. The Tuesday before my Memorial the Tuesday before Memorial Day, the day after my membrane sweep, I actually did lose my mucus plug. So um, I kind of thought that I was going to go into labor like really quickly after that, but nothing yet. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, wish me luck, you guys. Pray for me, and I will keep you guys updated. All right, talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, guys. So I'm actually finished with my consultation, which actually turned into a... Um, exam which actually turned into an adjustment so I knew that he wa I wanted him to do the Webster technique on me and he knew that that's kind of what I had come in for um, but he did like a full exam on me to check me out and see exactly where I needed to be adjusted and exactly what was going on uh, we I went back they did the tests on me the test said that I was in good condition I don't know what the highest score I think it's out of a hundred and I got an 85 out of a hundred as far as my overall um, health is concerned but it was really funny because the areas where it did show that I had concern were actually areas that I do have for, for lack of a better word like afflictions so um, the spikes came up and like my digestive area so he's like this could explain your heartburn and things like that and then of course in my reproductive area and things like that so um so he knew exactly where to adjust me he laid me down and adjusted um my back which was kind of scary um but it was really really cool because it's the first time i've laid on my stomach in months because they have those really cool pregnancy pillows and so he adjusted my back down there he adjusted my neck and for that i was laying on my back and it literally felt like i mean you know how you kind of like crack your neck like this from time to time like this was he totally took my head and like cracked it like i felt like like he I felt like he could have like snapped my neck but obviously he didn't he knows what he's doing but um that was that was very interesting um and he had me bef before like during the exam he had me lay on my back or lay on my stomach he had his hand on my lower back and he had me lift up my left leg my right leg my left leg my right leg and he's like can you feel the difference there I said yeah I can feel the difference my right leg it was like more difficult for me to lift it just slightly than the other leg and so afterwards whenever he was finished with my adjustment he had me do the same thing and I felt so like even it was crazy and I walked in there kind of like waddling and like kind of limping I guess and I walked back out and I felt like so rejuvenated it was so nice so um I actually really really liked it a lot and I really want to look more into chiropractic care and and things like that just for you know for for everyday like health upkeep and things like that because he really did educate me a lot so I definitely want to do more research on you know the benefits of chiropractics and things like that but I just thought I would let you guys know that I just got out of the chiropractors and it went really really good and I feel really really good and um yeah so so far so good we'll see if I go into labor tonight that'd be awesome all right I'll talk to you guys soon bye